Well, our first best of five of the tournament has been a good one. It's going all the way to game five as Team Tinkerino has battled back after falling in an 0-2 hole to Alliance quickly and forced this Dollar to its back. crescendo. I'm AC joined by Trout. And uh, tell you what, dude, just looking at the draft here for game five, this looks like a pub draft. This looks like an all-big pub. Oh, sorry. Yeah, almost had myself muted. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does with the faces Floyd and the sky Ten red Lycan. Kind of interesting to see Lycan finally finally picked up here. And normally, when you see a Lycan picked up, remaining. someone has uh, or the other team has a, an idea of what they want to do. Some things that come to mind right away that I always thought was good Lycan quote unquote counters is I know Treant is picked up a, was picked up a lot to kind of counter out the Lycan's movement um, and just be able to keep the towers up. Also, Axe. Is a very, very good counter to like, and I've seen that a lot. I remember during, actually, um, when we cast the D2L finals, um, we saw Lycan picked up a lot, and it was Navi that was baiting out the Lycan and constantly mm -hmm. picking Axe in response to that. So I would love to see that picked up. We don't see enough Axe, I think. It's a very fun hero to watch. Oh, yeah, fun hero to play, fun hero to watch, and arguably the most satisfying oh, ability in the oh, entire yeah. game. But, yeah, I mean, uh, waiting on the second pick phase to begin, we can see... There will be no Quake for Tinker this time, as I do believe Alliance learned their lesson. Uh, this time around, the Witch Doctor is still in the pool, if either team wanted to add that as well. Skywrath, Witch Doctor, Faceless Void. I, it's got its strengths, it's got its weaknesses, but I'll tell you right now, that's probably the most fun trio of heroes to run in the pub meta right now, anyway. What's that, the Skywrath, the Void, and what was the other one? Witch Doctor. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Witch Doctor with the Axult. It's pretty, pretty fun looking at it go and all that stuff. I'm still waiting to see how they want to follow us up. But yeah, let's glance back at last game. We we saw a bit of a slow start uh, for Tinker. But once they got Koikva in gear, you know, they were unable to stack the agents for a bit. So they made do with stacking the hard camp and that was okay. Then he finally got three stacks, I think, on the ancient cap, got his bots up. From that point on, it really was all about... Uh, tinker and map control we saw them give up a fight or two here there was a little bit of throw action from time to time but alliance with that ck that they paired with the io really did not feel the influence of that that often i mean what few relocates there were largely were break even affairs or at worst just ineffective entirely yeah, i really thought they were going to go aggro with their with their tri lane like i mentioned alliance love to go aggro they especially love to go aggro with wisps um with CK, and I, I feel like they had the tools to do so because of like just the Lich pick in general. It's normally not a hero you want to put in a defensive tri lane. Normally, you want the hero's effectiveness to be shown through dual lanes. And that being said, you if you can put a tri lane aggressively up against some kind of weak dual lane in their safe lane, it usually your tri lane will come out on top, especially an aggressive one with CK Lesh, right? So um, I thought they could have gone aggro. I also thought they could have pushed the tower a little bit better on in the safe lane i think they were a little bit weird about that like i mentioned they tried to go with the siege creep but they didn't they didn't have any spamming out of creeps and i don't, I don't think they put the double wave as well normally when you have the siege creep timing around 315 you want to pull just once and not connect it so you have an extra wave right um it, it just seemed like a little bit a little bit sloppy they weren't quite ready it's like the siege creep got there like oh yeah let's push but the problem was they didn't have ways to spam out the wave and then their siege creep eventually died only at Half HP for the tower, so yeah, I think those were the main problems, at least in the early game. I think a lot of that it has to be attributed to the way that Tinker played it out as well. They they really did a good job of controlling the map and not giving too many opportunities for ganks. Again, I mean there were some some holes in the armor from time to time, but for the most part, I feel like their positioning was great. Their drafting was actually pretty ingenious, and you brought this up in the game, but I think it deserves mention again. Uh, the fact that CK and his illusions were kind of made, if not totally ineffective, at least partially ineffective by Drunken Haze. Um, the fact that the brew could very easily take them out of the fight for the most part and just then, you know, just wait out CK's BKB was basically the biggest challenge they had. And uh, in the end, it was a challenge they were easy to, it was fairly easy to overcome. And Quake able to just burst him down no matter how tanky he happened to get. Rubik, the third pickup now for Team Tinker. So. The ability to still Ravage, going to be an option, and arguably one of the most easy ultimates to steal, like his ultimate. Yeah, it really is. Um, definitely good ult to steal. Jakiro here Ooh. for Alliance. Alliance have a very, lot of good heroes like in the metagame right now. Oh, yeah. Um, Jakiro is very, very popular. I see him run as a core several times, but I, 
I say core as in maybe if he's okay in the off lane, I like him. But as a farmer and as a one, eh, it can work. I've seen it work. It's not my favorite thing, but it certainly can. I expect him not to be core, though, with Tide and Lycan picked up. Um, though, I, again, I've I said before, I've seen weirder things. So, Shakira picked up. Lycan, they have a lot of push and good team fight right now. But they picked up Shakira also. Like you mentioned, Rubik was picked up on Tinkerino, which fantastic spells already to steal so far. And honestly, they had the Lycan ults good to steal, but if you can steal the wolves, it's even better. Mm -hmm. Like, having level 4 wolves... Uh, wow, it seems like Doom is getting picked up so late, but yeah, Doom is picked up now for Team Tinker. But like I was saying, if you can steal the wolves, it's so good for Rubik. Yeah, this... Um, I, I One, I echo that point. I mean, he's going to have so many awesome abilities to steal. Wolves, like you said, usually not that tough to get a hold of. I mean, pretty much, there's, there isn't a bad ability for him to steal. Like, if you still gush, that's still armor reduction and a slow. You still anchor smash, that's kind of badass, even though you are... Uh, generally not going to want to be as up close and personal in the fights as the Tide. Then, of course, Ravage. Ice Path, as we had mentioned, excellent ability for Rubik to steal as the uh, near zero cast point on it means it's much more effective without the wind-up delay. But I do love the push that is coming out from these three heroes, and this is going to be a lineup that if they are able to uh, to get a, a couple of wins here and there, if they're just able to win their lane between Liquid Fire and the ability to push of Lycan, gigantic, they're going to be able to melt waves very, very easily. Uh, with both those heroes and, of course, Anchor Smash, they have a reset button for Void if he happens to hit a nice Chronosphere so long as Tide is out of position or out outside of it and in position. Jakiro, of course, with Ice Path, a nice solution for that, too. So I like both drafts. I like them a lot more this time. You know, the last few games, looking at Tinker, you could see what they were going for and understand that it was a good draft. It was just it, it, they felt very unforgiving, whereas on both sides, I feel like there's a lot of forgiveness, and especially now with a Naga Siren to help set things up for Alliance. Holy crap, Naga. I didn't expect this one. But if they get their core items and they get to farm, it's going to be really, really scary. <laughs> Makes you wonder if maybe uh, Team Tinkerino has the capability to uh, maybe go aggro against it. I'm very curious to see. Uh, they could also It could also be a mid-Naga with a farming Lycan. I don't know just yet, but um, very, very interesting. I, I feel like that's a lot of farm to be had so far just with these heroes mm -hmm. between Lycan, Naga... And, and the Tide Hunter. We haven't even seen the last pick yet. Jakiro needs his farm too, but normally gets just enough gold to get that Yules through tower pushes, which is very right. easy for him to do with Liquid Fire. So Sand King banned out here. I feel like that would be a very greedy pick for Alliance if they did pick Sand King. So uh, last pick here for Team Tinkerino. It looks like they need another sort of core as they have Rubik and Skywrath as their supports. Um, still not sure if they're going to run Faceless Void in the offlane or Farming Doom. Most likely, I'm guessing a an off lane. Yeah, I don't know actually. They are radiant, so I think there you Doom go. off lane. Okay, yeah, Ember Spirit here for Team Alliance Tinkerino. Yep, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. And for Alliance, I'm kind of leaning towards a mid Naga Siren. Like you said, it's already a pretty greedy lineup. And they could put the tie in the off lane to pick up another support that is not going to demand all that much gold. But yeah, greed is definitely the word. You have right now four heroes. Like you said, the Jakiro does usually get his uh, what he needs through just tower gold. But at the same mm. time, I mean, the Naga, the, you know, Tidehunter deserves so much fine farm priority, and Lycan and Naga just eat the map alive. So not going to be a whole lot of creeps yeah. left much of anywhere for them. Meanwhile, for Tinker, I really liked Tinker's ability to come and fight very early and not have to really require that many items. I mean, if they can just land a good sphere, get a Skyrath ulti off, get a Doom off, an Ember, of course, just with nothing but Flame Guard and and uh, Searing Chains, etc. Like, even even though he usually requires a whole lot of items to really feel his full effectiveness, he's going to be able to find in tandem with the rest of this composition very effectively items or not. And then Shadow Shaman Rasta. You know, we haven't even seen... We haven't seen Rasta at all today, have we? No, I don't, this is our first time. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, Rasta picked up in the last spot as Loda does disconnect. Hopefully he'll be back soon. But Naga picked up... Or, sorry, Rasta picked up last. So lots of pushing power. Lots of pushing power here coming out from Alliance. There is some decent spam coming out from Team Tinker. And the Ember Spirit, if he does go for Battle Fury, is going to have... Well, actually, Battle Fury is not even necessarily that good here because it doesn't really do anything to the wards from a Shadow Shaman, so the cleave is not going to be that that effective. I mean, I, I guess it's good against the illusions of Naga, but Naga can just spread him out and push multiple sides. and. Mm -hmm can't be in two well i guess you kind of can be in two places at once at ember but i i think that the naga can spread you out better than you can defend multiple places at once yep i completely agree with you 
I do feel like in terms of just a full out, you know, all things being equal, assuming everyone hits their abilities to a decent degree, Tinker should have the advantage at least for a while. But the ability to punish mistakes from Alliance is going to be gigantic. They're going to be able to set up perfect, um, perfect war traps, perfect ravages, perfect ice paths with Naga Sleep. They're going to have the Lycan who's able to split push and free up the map for the Naga Siren. And of course, they have Shadow Shaman. His wards can be used um, quite nicely to push, but just also to deal with push. If you just want to buy time, if you want to stall, if you want to allow your Lycan to push down a side lane while the enemy tries to push another lane, drop the wards and just wait. And then when they drop, try to get sleep off, etc. You have that option um, as Alliance, whereas Tinker... I mean, they're greedy in their own little way. I do feel like they have a lot more natural synergy in Heroes, but uh, still comes down to execution. And it looks like... Let's see if I could open this up. Yeah, Koikfa's actually playing the Void. And isn't he normally their offlane player? I, I Yeah, I see him bounce around from yeah. mid, offlane to carry. He so and I don't even know. I think we lost it there for a second, but uh, yeah, I see, it looks like it is going to be Koikfa in the offlane because he's been pulled three tangos, three tangos actually. Went for the poor man shield um, and then an observer ward as well. So he's rushing down there to give some extra vision for himself. And it will be a farming doom for Piecat up in the top lane, tri lane. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, and it sounds like you're back. But yeah, I, I expect this this roaming duo of EGM and uh, and Bulbo to to roam mid a lot. Like these, these, one of the things that we didn't talk about too much is uh, actually you. You mentioned just a little bit when we first saw Rupik is this hero's potential to gank. Like, yeah, he doesn't have the most damage in the world, but the instant the instant grab, like the instant mm -hmm. telekinesis is done, it doesn't have any kind of cast animation or it's just bam, catches you instantly, is very, very effective, especially when you're smoked up. So yeah. Well, it's one of the very few abilities in the game at all that actually allow you to not only disable someone, but to change their positioning. I mean, you think about Magnus's skewer, etc. But at level one, like you said, it's instant cast. There's no damage really associated with it. But the ability at this level, whenever <clears throat> the vast majority of the map is sitting on just normal run speed, no brown boots, except for maybe your odd offlaner here and there, that positioning just makes such a difference. And I do think he's absolutely lethal being played aggressively or defensively. But looks like both teams just going to wait out the horn and get ready to get going. Knot it up again, two to two. This game determines who moves on to the grand finals. $15,000 in the prize pool here at the Game 24 Invitational brought to you by NVIDIA. Lanes take shape. How about we take a look at who's handling who? We're going to have load up on the Jakiro. So it could be a, that core Jakiro you were talking about. It is. It's going to be on that Naga Siren with Key the stand-in standing in for AK. He'll be playing on the Shadow Shaman, who did go boots first, as a matter of fact. Chessy playing on the mid Lycan. And, of course, Bulldog back on the tide offlane. Had a great game earlier. Hold that thought as Bulba. And EGM ready to put this to work, and Chessy's dead. Like, that's just all there is to it. He's going to be tossed back down to the low ground. And first blood. Alliance had to expect that they were going to be under some pressure in mid with Lycan, but don't know they expected it that quickly. Yeah, at the very least, um, Chessy did get one CS able to get enough gold for a TP that he bought right before he died. So if he didn't do that, he would have to ask one of his supports, which actually they... No, actually, Nagus Hangren almost had enough gold. <laughs> but that's really, really annoying as Dota is crashing all the time. It's actually been happening to me a lot, too. I've been yep. getting a lot of crashes. Volvo fix, please. As he's mentioning fatal errors. Yeah, it's just like it, it crashes, goes to my desktop, and then says like... Oh, what, what's the message? I forget it says, but, um, assert, like something assert <laughs> crash. And it happens, yeah, all the time. Fatality error. But yeah, that's exactly as we mentioned. This, these ganks in mid are so easy and they can just keep doing it over and over as long as they smoke out of vision. It's like a kill every single time. Yep. And, you know, this is one of the weaknesses of running something like, um, you know, a Lycan or, you know, so many of these greedy mid heroes, even a Naga would be susceptible to this. At least Naga, though, does have the net that could maybe get her out of some trouble. And she's a little more naturally tanky, starts with six armor compared to Lycan's three at this level. But yeah, like this is what, you know, this is basically just free pickings for uh, Team Tinker. And they're going to be able to roam all over the place. I mean, Bulldog, level two, did not go style shield this time. Instead, went brown boots, so he does have the movement speed. However, not a point in a Kraken shell means he will be able to 
Um, he will be absorbing a bit more from right clicks. Koikfa, in the meantime, though, is left to fend for himself down in this bottom lane. And this is where I feel like Alliance really needs to capitalize if these two are planning to spend a lot of time out of lane. You have to punish Koikva. You have to make this void pick feel greedy. Have to keep him out of relevancy as long as you can. Yeah, and a couple key things with that, as his name is key, is little stuff like this, how he's pulling the creep wave. It, it does kind of mess with the creep equilibrium just a little bit. You just got to be careful about that. But uh, again, um, you see this ward coming down uh, early on to give him extra vision. I feel like these teams have not been spotting out this offlane ward vision very well. Like the, I think they need to be rushing there because if he doesn't have this vision, he gets nothing. Mm -hmm. Whereas now he maybe he might get something depending on how well their lane control is as he is taking some damage. But um, yeah, it looks like they are getting some good pulls. So he's not going to get much. So very well, very well done by Alliance. And uh, yeah, so that being said, I was just talking about how he has good vision, but they're doing a very, very good job about connecting these poles and making sure he doesn't get much. And I will say that the one good thing about having uh, the core Jakiro, as I mentioned, that their, their lineup was really greedy if it was a farming Naga. There's too much farm to be spread. So in that sense, it does make it a little bit more acceptable. See Koikva still hovering around. You have to find his level two. Another smoke out of EGM and Bulba, who rotated top. Put a little fear in a Bulldog, but instead now pulling back. Level two on Bulba has Mystic Flare, excuse me, Magic Missile, and the concussive shot. Chessie playing very calm. Hope we lost you there for a second. But yeah, Chessie, if he steps up for just a split second, he is... He's dead. And he, he knows it. He, you can see his positioning. Like, no one would stand this way if they uh, they didn't expect something. He still actually might be dead. The slow from the concussed shot is very, very slow. But EGM is not going to go for it. I think they actually could have still killed him with, uh, depending on the build. Yeah, Sing Sing, he's a 2-0-3 build. So having the extra second on the steering chains. But I think he might have lost vision as well. Yep, Chessie able to survive that time around. And a little bit of wasted time out of supports now. Now, this is where... EGM and Bulba got to be careful. They don't want to spend too much time roaming and getting nothing accomplished. Yep. If anything, at least they are keeping uh, Chessie's CS down. Let me pull that up as he's up to... Actually, not too bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. Seven and one, and he has a creep wave coming in. So if he gets a couple CS here, that's going to be good. But, um, I mean, they are giving free farm to Sing Sing. Like, he's, he's getting lots of free farm. But the thing is, is he'd be getting that free farm regardless, I think. Like, he's going to get... Every single oh, he misses a creep there. As I was talking about him getting free from, but um, Howl coming out bottom. How's Koikfoot doing? Level two. Okay, so they're not doing too bad in this the safe lane tri lane, keeping him down at least a little bit. Top lane, Admiral Bulldog. How he's how's he doing? He because of the rotations and the roaming around, he's been able to have basically a free time up here, getting some good CS. Nine and two compared to eighteen and two for Pycat. So obviously Pycat's leading, but that's to be expected, I think. And Chessie continuing to play pretty ballsy. Those the supports are up at top. Now <clears throat> using his wolves to attempt to bolster his CS. Total top two in terms of CS at this moment anyway. Do belong to Tinker. Doom with 20 as he has been farming very well. Take a look at Quakevine now coming up on level three. They have denied him a fair amount, but still getting a little bit under his belt. Not nearly as good as Bulldog, though, who's almost two full levels ahead. Up to level four and a half. A little more than that, actually has his arc boots done right now. Yeah, pretty good for him. Koikva, he has one point left to go. I wonder if he's going to get that value point. Oh, he finds a haster in bottom. It will get spotted out by uh, Alliance. They do have vision of this. And he's just going to try to be a nuisance, I suppose. But uh, not too much more he can do. Maybe go for... Nope, Courier's upgraded. So no Courier sniping today. Yep, going to go ahead and back off. He's going to head towards mid. And Chessie... Could be in a smidge of trouble. Does have help from Bulldog, who has rotated over to make sure. I'm not sure if it's so much to make sure he's safe as it is to maybe go jungle now that he has arc boost. Yeah, looks like they're expecting another gank attempt. Koikva uses the remainder of the haste and a time walk to get back up under his own tier one. Take a look at net worth. No surprise. Sing Sing's on top. Doom's right there. Loda on the core Shakira. We haven't talked a whole lot about this because he's been left pretty much to himself. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's fine. I'm very curious as to why he didn't get one value point in a dual breath. If you look at the way that it scales, it's oh, only on. the... Bulldog oh. spotted near his own agents. And Kraken's out of some of the damage doesn't matter as Bulba's there to collapse. And secured the kill. That's two to nothing. Tinker off to a great start. Koikva being chased away. He is being held down level-wise fairly well. But the activity out of Bulba and EGM more than making up for it. 
Yeah, but um, yeah, nice kill there. As, as I mentioned about the Jakiro, though, like if you look at the scaling of his dual breath, the only thing that scales is the damage. Everything else, the, the move slow, mm -hmm. the attack slow, or static from one to four. And in fact, it costs actually more mana as you level it up. So one value point into it is actually extremely good. That's why I'm very surprised I don't see that he's put one into it. As he understandably puts a third point into Liquid Fire, but I don't think he needs two into Ice Path this early on. So kind of interested about that. They haven't done a timing push here in the bottom tower. In fact, the tower has taken literally zero damage. So kind of interesting when you pick a Zakiro that you're not pushing this early. But they are getting good farming their supports. And similarly, they're keeping Koikva at... Uh, a very, very minimal amount of experience. I think that's the key thing here. Doom's going to be six soon. And after he clears this last little camp, he'll be six. We'll see if they want to try to make something happen with Doom freshly finished. What's he got on the courier? Yeah, they're going to go and go. There's the silence as well as the slow. Pycat did hit six. Doesn't have enough mana for the Doom, but it's not going to matter. He Krakens out some of the damage, but not going to matter. Oh, Pycat. Okay. Okay. I guess, I guess, was he trying to give it to uh, the Skywrath Mage, probably? I, I think he just misclicked or misstepped or something. Yep. But um, either way, he do, they do get the kill. This uh, lane is being pushed out. They lost some creeps, so they're, they they're going to need to try to push this, and they definitely can. Ice Path being used for damage on creeps, kind of interesting. <laughs> but he does have a lot of mana to expend, so... This should be a, eventually a dead tower, unless some of the supports come. Koikfa gets sheeped up, but he should be fine. Yeah, they're going to need some supports keeping down right now if they really want to save this, but that kind of seems like a futile movement when it's up against Liquid Fire and Jakiro because yep. it's it's no mana cost. He can do it from afar and back away. It still does damage even when he's not near it. So very, very effective hero in that sense. Well, this is one of the things that makes Jakiro so damn strong right now is, you know, you come into the laning phase, he can be played as a great aggressive support, he can play as a great defensive support, you can do something on orthodox and put him as a core, but more importantly, if if the enemy is moving their heroes around and just kind of forsaking this lane, which is basically what they've done to Quake, but just left him down here and said, get what you can, man, just don't die and we'll try to make up for it later. He is one of the few heroes that, even super early on, can ensure a tower death in just a couple of waves because of the strength of liquid fire we actually see they're pulling now and not wanting to go ahead and go for the tower kill i mean the reason why they're doing this is just trying to get as much experience and farm on their supports and at the same time keeping koi foot very low farm and see or very low farm and experience himself only level five compare that to how's bulldog doing he's level six now so he's a full level uh ahead of koi trying to contest this rune can he get it it spawns actually top i think yeah, i think it was killed by the wolves yeah, yeah. wolves denied it I see done by Chessy. He's on his way to his Vlads, and uh, he's got 43 CS, so despite the aggression coming out, um, and that second time they tried to kill him, he, he understood it was happening, and they wasted a smoke, so Chessy not doing too badly here. Here we go. Loda, three points in the liquid fire, three in the ice path, another pause, as it has been a long series, but a good one, and looks like whatever issue it was resolved very quickly, just lag apparently. Koikva, just level 5, will not have Chronosphere to call upon. They do decide to glyph. If they got two coming down, that's Bulba and Pycat. Pycat with Doom at the ready. And Misery getting out there, not level 6 either. And yep, there's going to be the Ice Path catches. Sing, 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 TPing in. There's a Shackles as well. And the Ravage that catches 3. Actually, that caught 4. Koikva dodged it, but it was stolen by EGM. Turned around. Ice Path catches 2, but Sing, Sing's on the pursuit. He's hexed out. Load up. Doing what he can, but there's only so much he can do. Whatever, you're up against Sing Sing on an Ember Spirit with that much momentum. They end up getting one. I didn't see if the tower was denied or if it dropped legitimately, but either way, Team Tinker continues to build on their kill lead and build on their momentum. Six to one, nine minutes in. Yeah, you really got to spam that that E button or whatever you have it bound to the, the anchor smash as soon as you, you cast Ravage. Um, sometimes it can't be hard if the Rubik is right on point, but nonetheless, definitely turning that around with that stolen Ravage. He's going to have that up, I think, one more time to cast as well, uh, as the duration is just a bit longer than the Ravage cooldown itself. So if he's able to use that a second time, it's going to be very good. I'm very curious about Lotus' build here. He's gone 0 3 threes, no points in Macropire. I can understand that sometimes, but he didn't even get level 4, or um, he, he still doesn't even have one point into the, uh, the Dual Breath. I just And now... He's level 7, and he foregoes the 4th point in Liquid Fire for Macro. I, I, it seems very strange to me. I, I, I feel like there's definitely cases to be had for making 
one point in a dual breath. And uh, maybe he just really wants the extra duration for that ice path, but I don't think it makes all that much of a difference. It doesn't really scale that well. It's only like 0.4 seconds each time. Pycat chasing down Key. Key gets off the hex. There's the Ember Spirit to follow. Very quick reaction, and Chessie needs to get out of there. Was about to rush into a lost fight as EGM was making his way down. To be honest, Tinker is just dismantling Alliance, and I feel like part of this has to be considered game planning. Like, the first two games, we saw Alliance very dominant. They were running very stable lineups that, you know, made sense lane-wise, made sense matchup-wise. This time, you've got the core Jakiro, you got the mid Lycan, and now Sing Sing catching out that core Jakiro. Ice Path dodge, Sing Sing does not care. Koikva comes in, drops the sphere, and brings down the THD. And this one is very quickly getting away from Alliance. They need to make something happen. Bulldog eating a lot of damage from Sing Sing, who burns him down with the Flame Guard as well as the Searing Chains. But yeah, like, Koikva's caught up now. He's got eight. He's level eight. Sing Sing level nine and a half. And it looks like they're ready to go ahead and try to push down tier one as they rotate another one up. Yep. And I, I mean, I will say that they are getting good towers. Like, while that fight was happening... Um, on bottom, Lycan was able to get out that, that tower in mid, so that's good for him. The tower on top is very, very low HP. It's actually in deny range. I, I wonder if they should want to deny that. They, they don't have a glyph. My, my rule of thumb is that, oh, I heard a Ravage somewhere. Uh, I, I, nope. Yeah, yeah, EGM just used it. Oh, just for funsies? Keys, by the way, tracked down by Sing Sing and killed off. It is own jungle, so EGM freaking out the casters. GG well played. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? He used it on, like, wolves or something? I don't know. But, he, I mean, the cooldown was just about to go, so maybe right. it was just a celebratory. Haha, -ha, I got one more Ravage. Gonna be a bit of a race now as we got two pushing top tier one. Meanwhile, Lodi and Misery are pushing on this tier two. Misery now at level six has Song to rely on if he needs it. One point into Mirror Image as well, so gonna be able to use those illusions to split push in conjunction with the power of what is now level four Liquid Fire. Chessie, in the meantime, continuing to farm up. He's got his Trez and his Vlads. Bulldog with Ravage at the ready. Gonna hope he doesn't give this one away to EGM. But looks like they're just gonna go ahead and back off. Not feeling confident. Koikva still 20 seconds out from Chrono, though. A very distinct, bold line coming out from Misery as it goes right through the river as he wants them to smoke up top. And the rune did spawn, I believe, for um, Sing Sing. Yeah, he has a regen. As he's trying to find somebody. He is very, very farmed. He's 5-0-3 right now. But Alliance, they want to fight, and they want to fight now with the uh, the Ravage up for Bulldog. He does not have a blink, but they still want to use it nonetheless. This tower, like I said, is very, very low. I'm wondering why they have not denied it. They still could maybe have a chance to, but the Wolves are kind of posturing in a way to get a last hit. Bulba pops the smoke, gets off the concussive shot, doesn't matter, as the net and the Ice Path are there to follow. And they take that for free. In the meantime, Pycat has to TP out as Jesse used his ulti and prompted him to run so win for alliance but it's one of very very few they've had so far so a lot of ground for them to make up yeah, and they got the tower killed for alliance I, I don't know why they didn't deny that that seems very, very they had ample time to do so um after they they left that push in the top lane for whatever and now they're pushing top with wards and level four liquid fire this cannot be ignored this is very there's a lot of map control chrono is ready and here he comes yep ravage ready as well oh he got everyone Follow up, the Doom on the Bulldog, and there's the Mystic Flare as well. Song buys a little bit of time, but the damage already done. Sing Sing will pursue, and Chessy is able to TP away behind that. Koikva still giving pursuits, got eyes on two. Here comes Sing Sing, coming through the trees, and Snare catches the Void. Ice Path jumped through by Sing Sing, well played, gun them both. And EGM, with another big steal, gets an Ice Path that catches two, and honestly, that just felt like Alliance asleep at the wheel. They had to know that was the Void coming. They could just look up and see the color, and yep. yet they all stood in a circle about that tight. Yeah, there's, I was just going to say that you can clearly see who's deep being in. And so it was like, wasn't like he was making some fancy move or the smoke behind or anything like that. Mm -hmm. He TP'd in front of what could have been an ice path laid down. I don't know if it was on cooldown, but something needed to be done. Like, they just sat there and took it. Like, they just all got chrono. That's... It's kind of unacceptable. Maybe even just um, maybe blow the Ravage and kill him instantly. But they, they did obviously didn't have a plan or didn't communicate well enough with each other. Maybe someone thought that, that uh, Bulldog was in a Ravage. Maybe Bulldog wanted him to Ice Path. You don't know for sure. Right. But either way, the communication wasn't there, and there was no excuse for them to get all chronoed like that.
Yeah, no, I agree with you. That seems like a breakdown of communication for sure, because it's not like these players didn't know, you know. But yeah, exactly. They, they obviously knew he was TPing in. They just, I, I think it was like the team wanted Bulldog to, to ravage, because he was like right there. He was like right in the front of everybody. And maybe Bulldog didn't want to waste it on a, on a, on a void, so. Yeah, you, you, we don't know for sure as casters, but something went wrong, obviously. <laughs> Went well, again, depends on what point of view you're looking at. Went wrong for Alliance, but if you're a Team Tinker fan, it went very, very I mean, right. That should, like, if I'm Tinker, I'm, I'm like, that should never have worked. Yep. Like, should have died. Be should have been dead. <laughs> well, I don't even know if Koika should have died. It just, he, he shouldn't have been able to TP like that and get everybody from Alliance. <laughs> like, it's pretty crazy. That five man Chrono, he's going to be caught in the nice path here, eating uh, quite a bit of damage from nothing but Liquid Fire and Wolves. Look at that. Lost half his health bar. To an ice path, and speaking of ice path, the EGM still has his. And there's another one. They're going to jump on the quake fight. There's going to be a telekinesis here. It comes Why is he not ravaging? I, don't I guess he just wants to hang on to it. The macro pyre was spent, though. That's the odd part. Like, if you're going to spin a macro pyre, you'd think they would want to spin the ravage. For I now. mean, that's, yeah, that's two kills right there if you wanted to. But he's saving the ravage. He still has it. What was stolen? It is wards. Mass server wards wow. were stolen. But the tower does go down for Loda, who gets that with the Liquid Fire. So nonetheless, despite them being down heavily in hero kills, their pushing power is still there and still there strong as they have all their towers. And actually only one outer tower is remaining for Team Tinker. So there's still bite on the heels of Team Tinker with all this tower pushing, but the experience grab is actually heavily in favor of Team Tinker. Oh, yeah. The gold, a little deceptive right now. However, that said, Naga being in the position four as opposed to the... Position one makes a big difference. You, you know, normally you'd look at the lineup like this and go, well, Naga can always transition. She can, she's always that late game safety bell. Not so much, especially whenever you have the Serpent Wars to take a quick Roshan just like this. Koikva shut down as he was, has more than caught up and has his Mask of Madness up now. Alliance making their way over. Bulldog will have Ravage. We're going to keep an eye on him. Here comes Chessie leading the way. Wolves are going to go in. Rosh should have health. Let's see how they want to engage this. They're waiting, waiting, waiting. They've got a little bit more time, and they know it. Not much, though. Roche at a quarter. Bulba gets up on the high ground. Here comes the song. Song to engage. Bulldog getting in a perfect position. That's going to be a... Oh, he got silence. Oh, he got silence. Beautiful reaction, and Bulldog barely on the outside of it. Koikva missed by what couldn't have been a millimeter. And because of that, the Ravage does go off. Bulba with re phenomenal reaction. Got the silence off. And in the meantime, Chessie finishes off Roche and takes the Asia Sing Sing. Hex wants to jump up to the high ground, and there's going to be a pause. <laughs> and as they, as they resume immediately, oops, he says Sing Sing's in trouble. He gets caught by the net, out of mana, but just uses his stick, and he will TP out. Have a Bulldog, what are you doing? What, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> he didn't actually have vision of the Ember, but he's like, uh, I'm taking damage, guys, and EGM snipes him out with a Fade Bolt. Well played by EGM. What a disaster, though, for Team Tinker. Oh, man. I thought it could have been good for them because they, they silenced um, yep. the Tide, but Dude. he was still able to get off the Ravage. The Chrono outside. the yeah. chrono hit, like, right about here, and Bulldog was seriously right here. If he'd have caught Bulldog with that Chrono and prevented the Ravage, they would have focused him down, and they would not have had that reset button. As it stands, that's a big win for Alliance. Oh, man. Absolutely. And there's the Necro 3. For the Lycan, they, again, I, the point still stands. They have all their towers. Necro 3 up on top of Vlad's with Treads and the Aegis on Lycan. Wow, what a swing. What a swing indeed. Yep, there is that gold lead. Alliance has been looking for, looking to break it open. Still trailing a bit in terms of levels, but they have put a dent into it. And now this is where just the pure out-and-out -out pushing and punching power comes into play. Loda has been spending his macro pyres very liberally, if I do say so. Using them a lot on lane creeps, using them a lot preemptively. How do you feel about that? Like, it's just something you don't see that often. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I need one moment. Someone's furiously knocking at my door. So <laughs> I will be right back in just a second. They're, they're coming to excavate the bodies from, uh, yeah. from his basement. All right. I got this solo. Well, Trout does his own thing. And we see Koikva trying to push here. Loda hits the ice path. Reaction's coming in. And Bulldog right there with him. Koikva has time walk. We'll go ahead and do it the other way. And we'll be able to make it away. As Loda didn't even throw out a a uh, wishful thinking ice path. Instead, just farming up. Another okay, I'm back. Sorry. Welcome back. Hopefully, all is well. It was actually just construction in the uh, apartment complex, so. Oh, sweet. Never mind. 
Well, hopefully they're uh, done hanging lights or paintings or whatever. But yeah, they, they tried the gank at the bottom, didn't work, and everyone resetting. However, Sing Sing's just getting more and more strong, and this is one of the things, again, they can rely on. They have the Naga Siren is not a core, the Jakiro is. In the meantime, Sing Sing has got a Battle Fury up, and he's going to be doing more and more damage as this game goes later and later. So even though they're losing out on some of these fights, if they could just hold on, they have a sufficient lead that they generated early on that they should just be able to slowly arc into the late mid game and on into the late game. Yeah, I, there's a couple things I fear for Team Tinker though. One is that Lycan is just so freaking strong mm -hmm. and he's had such a great time with that, that momentum swing around Roche, so that's a problem. Um, two, this is actually not the best game for Doom. He's got so many different targets he needs to focus on. And once Rasta Wards are down, you don't want to focus her anymore. You also want to focus to Kiro just because he's a core and he does a lot to your towers. You want to focus to Tide so it doesn't ra I mean, there's so many heroes to try and focus, but... So, like, who do you cast it on? Is it even really going to be that effective if you cast it on, you know, this hero over that hero? I think they're all equally important. So it's a really hard game for Doom to really find the right target. Um, and then also, the Koikvo, he hasn't had the most farm. And I fear also for his team that... If he doesn't continue to get these amazing Chronospheres, if he only gets an average, you know, one to two man Chronosphere rather than the three to four that he's been getting, are they going to be able to execute these fights as well as they have been? I'm not quite so sure. We see the wave spam really coming into play now for Sing Sing and EGM. They actually just took that entire wave and completely dismantled that push with nothing but one slide of fist and one fade bolt. <clears throat> and this is, again, I, I think the comfort zone for Tinker. Um, we're just going to see Sing Sing start doing so much damage. And it definitely is, it definitely feels at least like Alliance is the one who's going to be under the gun a little bit. Koikva playing very safe right now, has not spotted anyone now that he sees someone in lane top. We'll go ahead out to farm this lane. And he's got up an Ogre Club. So we'll see if he wants to go BKB or if that's going to be on the way to a Scepter. A little counter warding action being done for right now. I imagine that would be a, a Black King bar. It's going to be really effective for him. And uh, as we see a possible push up here in the top lane. They probably want to use this Aegis here for Chessie. And one of the good things that you were mentioning is they do have the, the ways to spam out these waves, but that's why Jakiro is so good. And, and that's why also Rasta is so good. You can still siege the tower without them having any real like ways to, to stop it, you know? I mean, they can kill the wards. They definitely can't deal with the liquid fire once you get it off, so... We can see right there, yet another one. Another wave spammed out, just two creeps limping in, and there's going to be... Searing Chains as well. They could decide to pursue this out. We see bottom tier one did drop. Quickfoot's going to be on his way back. And Bulldog hits another big Ravage. Caught three. Here comes Rubik. Rubik comes in, gets off the Telekinesis. And trying to chase this down. Mystic Flare off the mark. There was a Doom onto the Rasta. He's cleaned up behind the fight. Pycat now doing what damage he can. Sing Sing re-engaging. And there's that Chrono. Quickfoot caught him from behind. Get Sloda. Going to get Bulldog. And Sing Sing. Putting this Ember Spirit through the paces. Once again, biding his time, waiting it out. They grouped up. He slide of fisted, and Koikva was there to play cleanup crew. 18 to 6. They defend the tower, and Koikva beginning to feel very dangerous on his own. I mean, Koikva's so fucking good, man. <laughs> he is. The, the, he's, he's remarkable. Did you see that chrono? He caught. Yeah. I mean, they were, granted, they were kind of clumped up at the end there, but he chronoed them with Ember Spirit just slightly still outside so that he could still attack the, the mm -hmm. hero. It's hard to do when it's a melee hero, and he did it in the, in the heat of the moment. Universe, watch out, buddy, because uh, Koikva here playing this Void is looking for the number one spot as far as players for Void. It, it just continues to impress. This is all, t too, with like the very, very difficult and good zoning, I might add, from Alliance in the laning stages, but he's now got, I think he has a BKB actually finished on the career. Yeah, he does. So, Koikva, man, I am friggin' impressed yet again. 24 minutes in, 24 kills on the board, and Tinker, looking like they might have broken a little bit there, able to get that fight under control, and yeah, this is this is where you knew it could end up like this, especially with a Doom who, who goes Midas. If you buy him enough time, he's going to explode in overall GPM. He's now the second highest on the board net worth. Behind him are the Ember Spirit and Koikva's Void, even though he did have a bit of a slow start. And that Shakiro core is not really paying for itself. I feel like they could have gotten just about as much out of him if they had played him as a four. And I also don't know why he went for Atos. Like, I've been seeing Yules. this eight. Yeah, well, yeah, Yules is really good. I've been seeing this Atos trend lately, and I'm, I'm not... 
I'm not hopping on it. Like it's good on some heroes. Like it's, I think it's okay on DP. It's good in some situations, but oh, Pike it actually gets caught with an ice blast. As he uses Atos, he can just BKB and TP out if he wants to. Um, we'll see if he does do that. He's spending a lot of time, and now he spent so much time that I don't think it's going to be enough. Yep. Yeah, I think he could have done it a long time ago, so he will Wasted. die. In the meantime, Naga did fall to the Void. So. Yep. It sounded like Void got a bash. We were watching bottom, and I saw Misery had something to say about it. Here's a response of three. Sing Sing leading with the chin, wants to find a target. And Key could be by himself, throws out the remnant, and yep, spots out the Rasta. Silenced and blown up, burned down. Rest of the team behind that trying to run. Load up. Looking for some safety in the trees. Sing Sing happy to just get forward. EGM with Bulba. Blow him up. Sing Sing with the last little love tap. And then up at top. Koikfa now split pushing. Top tier one. Misery's there as his Bulldog. Koikfa 45 out from Chrono. Misery does have sleep. Does have net instead. Not wanting to take any chances. I suppose just going to chase him away. But another one fight going the way of TT. Even though PyCat did drop beforehand. Yeah, they can't kill Koifa either. He can just BKB and, and TP out as well. So, yeah, this is going very, very well. And not to say that the Atos is why Alliance are losing. I just thought that could have been a different item. But like I mentioned that at that top fight, I was talking about Poth, like who does he really doom? And I was like, if the Shadow Shaman gets his wards off, he's kind of pointless. He didn't. And that I think that could have also been a, a big factor in the fight as well. It, it might have made a small difference because I think at the time... Oh, he is only still only level 9, so it's only level 1 wards. But he did doom him before he cast the wards. So it, it ended up being a very effective doom in that case. Taking a look around elsewhere. That Void is just about to have level 3 Chrono. He'll... Yep, gets it right there. The Ember Spirit. Level 16 as well. He's actually going crit as he's picked up a Chrysalis and... At this point, Sing Sing's damage output's going to be so high. Like, they have to win every fight immediately, basically. Like, you can't draw out fights, especially against an Ember, but most most importantly against an Ember and a Void, especially given how Quickfa's been playing. Quickfa has not been their primary initiator in most cases. He's been playing patiently and punishing over extensions and clumping up that naturally occur whenever two teams go back and forth. Like, I think he has played as good a game of Void as I've seen since TI. Yeah, it's been a very, very good game for him. I mean, he's been playing very well considering his his circumstances in the beginning. I didn't notice this. Maybe you did, but there's a freaking relic on Naga. Yep. So it looks like Alliance are really trying to take this late. I don't know if I if I really think that's going to work, though. Like, It's going to be hard for them to farm with, like you mentioned, Ember constantly pushing stuff out. Pycat is caught by an Atos. He can just BKB TP out if he wants to. He does BKB, and he actually doesn't have room for TP, so he'll just run away. But... Yeah, I don't know how this Relic or this Radiance is actually going to be too effective. I, I, I'm willing to wait and see, though. Well, I mean, they got to do something. They they are not going to transition Lo to, to much more than he's giving them now. He's 1-4. and four. Core Jakiro has... And not to say it's bad in all cases. It just hasn't worked in this game. And you're just not going to transition that hero into anything much more than he is at level 16. So instead... Giving some priority to the Naga, hoping a Radiance will be enough to give them some map control. Now we're going to have a Ravage. Ravage catches just Bulba. Chessie coming in from behind. They got the Rubik with that as well, actually, not just Bulba. Bulba just died so damn quick. But Bulba using that Ghost Scepter and making a way. Pycat now engaged upon. There's that Athos and the Ice Path. Oh, what was that? Very interesting. Is um, very interesting jump in there by Pycat. He actually didn't have speed KB, as you mentioned, or as we saw, he used it up top. So it was on cooldown for another 17 seconds, I want to say. Wards come down. Timely respawn here for Roshan. As Alliance will be more than happy to take this. And game of throws, man. Like, constantly <laughs> back and forth. Pycat, he does buy back. They want to take this. It might be too late, though. Yep, I don't think they're going to get there in time. There's, There's the song. A, yep. Yep. Got her for free. <clears throat> the Ember immediately remnants away. They may try to pursue it. Uh, nope, Koikva in a position where he might have thought about trying to engage, but that Radiant's done on Naga. This is a new lease on life for Alliance. They can change the way they want to approach it now. Obviously, 29-minute Radiant's not optimal, but not too damn bad for a four-position Naga Siren. That was actually a huge momentum swing. Like, they got two easy kills in the mid, which was great initiation by, uh, by Bulldog, but then PyCat feeds himself. For really no reason. He like jumped in to stomp and then he was looking for a doom target. Felt like he couldn't find one. Then just dies because his BKB was on cooldown. Then he buys back and doesn't do anything with it. Then Alliance gets Roche. 
So it's actually a, mo a very giant momentum swing. Um, I'm, I'm willing to see what the graphs do. They are still a considerable deficit, but it's definitely on the on the high rise there for them. Here we go. Push on the tier two bottom. Let's see if Alliance wants to do anything to stop it. Does look like they're, well, I don't know, they glyph. And that's going to be enough to force them back for a minute. In the meantime, they lose their top tower. And now going to work. Down it goes uncontested. Yep. Kind of weird glyph there. I, I don't know why. Uh, I don't think the, the glyph just to buy some time for no reasons really, really makes too much sense. If you're going to glyph, I think you need to make something out of it. So obviously a little a small error but every little bit counts invis rune top dire oh, wow. carrier killed by it looks like lycan as they yep. ping him out yep they spotted it going into the secret shop <clears throat> quite a big deal lycan speaking of is getting large and in charge he's got 4600 gold on him right now so he's gonna have the option of going basher going pretty much heart if he wants if he feels like his damage output is sufficient doesn't need any extra he bought him. something Yep, Bulba runs right into the real misery. Key's there. And they're just gonna back off. Knowing Bulba likely not there by himself. Pycat blinks ahead. And thinking about He's getting trying chased to by him. wolves. A bulldog under cover of an invis. And Bulba trying to make it away. He's gushed. And Bulldog sneaky. Sneaky <laughs> Leviathan. Gushes, blinks high ground, and manages to TP away. He's a rat even when he kills. <laughs> Really nicely done. The wolves actually were going to kill him solo, and ETM was forced to use the, the telekinesis on one of them. So nice snipe there by uh, by Bulldog. And create him some space for for Loda as well, who's got another 3,400 gold under his belt. Very curious to see what he wants to buy. Honestly, I think a big item at this point is going to be smartest. Like, none of this small crap. I think Hex. Yeah, he buys an ulti orb, so I'm guessing Hex, the, the Scythe of Ice, would be very effective. Um, and yeah, so if he want, if that's what he wants, he's on his way towards it. The Sulcurus is done on the Lycan. And he is really in a position to just run over top of Tinker if they misstep at all. But it looks like the same's on the way for Pycat, I guess. <clears throat> can't really say that could very easily be a Shiva's as well. As we get into the later phases now, this, for a minute there, looked like a game that maybe could have ended early, but 30 minutes in, still a ways to go before we're into what we comfortably call the late game. Who do you give the edge to, given the Naga does have the Radiance up and is beginning to put together a little bit of farm? Oh, boy. It's, it's so hard to say, because it, if, if Void gets a good chrono, it's like two heroes killed immediately, or however many he chronos, because this Void's just going to get more and more damage, and because he has the BKB, it's hard to stop him. Um... God, I, I would say, honestly, just because Alliance have double Ravage and they have pushing power with Lycan, I would give the edge to them, but it's it's really hard to call. Like, it really is. Like, and that's... that's that, I'm saying that with a 10k experience lead deficit, but yeah, it's 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 really going to be who outplays who, who gets the jump on who, and I think it's really going to come down to how well Koi can, can place these, how quickly and effectively he can place these Chronospheres. Oh, for now... A little bit of jungle invasion going on on both sides. As Alliance has taken over the Dire and TT, the Radiant, pulling back now. Pycat will be going with the Shiva's Guard. Love that pickup against the Lycan in particular. And as of right now, Lycan's really their only source of consistent, sustained DPS. They have good initiation. They have good lockdown. They've got an okay magic burn damage, um, at least for the moment. I mean, it helps to have the Radiance, helps a ton to have... An overlevel Jakiro, although in fairness, he's just level 14, so it's not as if giving him that attention early on has gotten him to his level 3 ulti any quicker. But, um, but yeah, they've got to, you know, if they get the Shivas up and they can find any way to cope with this Lycan, they're just going to be able to steamroll. Yeah, and, and if they if they take this really, really late and end up pulling this one off, Misery is going to make me eat my words because I, I didn't think initially that this Radiance was going to be too effective because I thought that TT was just in a position to just go fight and win because of their massive lead, but because this game has been drawn out and they're doing a good job of doing so, this Radiance is going to vastly pay for itself and spread the map open. And one of the better heroes to play against Void is ones that kite him across the map, like Furion and, and Naga with the Radiance, because, you know, he's very kind of single target based. He wants to jump on one, maybe two if he's lucky, or three or four if he's very, very lucky. 
heroes, but that's hard to say. Like, they have to be all clumped up, but you can easily spread the map out with Naga. And so, yeah, very well played now for Misery and the rest of Alliance. Looks like everyone content to just farm a bit for the moment. Oh, and bottom. Koik was looking for a kill. Maybe. I think he was going to farm. He may... No, he's going to go for it. Misery. Spotted and got the sleep off just in time. Doesn't have a TP, though. And certainly no bots. They may try to make something happen at top because of it. He's going to be able to make it away. Up at top, we're going to see the Doom on Admiral Bulldog. And we'll check back in on Koifa in a minute. Bulldog's going to end up dropping to this. In the meantime, we've got Sing Sing trying to get on Loda down at bottom. Koifa does manage to clean up the Naga Siren. And that's going to be a gem. So Alliance, in both cases, loses. Loses two heroes. They desperately need up farming and relevant. 40 seconds down for each. Tier 1 top, certainly going to be a prize. Yeah, he, he tried to, like... He tried to confuse Void by maybe using the uh, the illusions and spreading them out and, and doing some kind of cute play right there. I think he could have just maybe like picked either up or down to TP and make either Void look for him, which would take too much time, or just guess his chrono. I think that might have been the smarter route, but it, it's hard to say in situations like that. Oh, top lane. Yep, BKB, and yep, we see... Another pick off as Shadow Shaman ends up dropping. Bulba now in trouble as Chessy is right on him. There's the silence. Bulba right click down as the big bad wolf scratches a little bit too hard. Sing Sing has a Daedalus, a Battle Fury, and another broadsword up. So we'll see if what he's going to grab with that. Could it be a. Uh, what do you think? It looks like another Battle Fury. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Double Daedalus, perhaps? Oh, no, no. I think he's. Well, did he sell something? No, no. Yeah, it's, it's the second Battle Fury. Yep, there it is. Just so got, got done. Two Battle Furies. So, yeah, like you mentioned, their, their creep clearing. Can I say this? Creep clearing yeah. ability is very, very strong. Um, God, it's so close. It's such a crazy game, man. It, it really could go either way. Mm -hmm. There you go. Due BF with the single Daedalus. And a double damage rune just to the south. One gets away. Tinker, despite being at a heavy advantage by all the metrics, be it kills, be it gold, be it experience, still has to close this one out. They do have the Naga, who is beginning to get a fair amount of farm. In fact, she has slowly crept up into the middle of the pack. She's right behind the Doom and the Void. I guess right behind maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Only about 3K, 3.5K gold away, which is saying something given she was right about where Bulba and the Rubik are right now. Yeah, she was a, she was a four, so playing support for the the first like 10 minutes or so and then got her farm up so still a lot of farm on I, I, he it is a basher here for lycan so that abyssal blade's coming out relatively soon which is i mean he's once he gets that he's basically maxed i, mean, I guess he can sell the vlads for like i don't know a heart or something but the vlads is also useful for the rest of his team too again i, I still think it's going to come back to koikva if he can get these really really good chronos on multiple heroes. I could see this game going really, really long, though, just because they have the Naga with the Radiance. They, w they want to extend this game, Alliance, dude. Well, they certainly got the tools. But as Sing Sing gets bigger and bigger, I, I don't care how powerful your Naga is, an Ember Spirit that gets this gigantic, that, like, I mean, he's on his way. He's got 3,200 gold to go with his two Battle Furies and his Daedalus. More yeah. than 38 minutes. I mean, yes, it's late-ish, but it is not so late. And Chessy, double damage rune, might want to try to put it to work. But yeah, I, I believe in Sing Sing, man. His Ember Spirit, come late game, is about as legit as it gets. It's definitely a very good hero in late game, and he's got a lot of farm, but there's also good heroes on Alliance side that are good for late game. DD on Chessy, as you mentioned, with Roshan just spawning. This is going to go down so freaking fast. And they also have the Song of the Siren to deploy if they need to, which I don't think they even do. Nope. No challenge at all coming out of Tinker. Roshan, picked up by Alliance. Let's see what they want to do with it. Jakiro actually going to take the Aegis. And Sing Sing came in to do what he could. Ice Path shot as a buy your leave. And now collapsing into men. In the meantime, it's up. We see Pycat doing what split push he can. And they're just going to go straight for Tier 3s. We even see it pinged out. Sing Sing. Going to have to come up big right now. They could use another big sphere. And there's going to be a Ravish that actually just got Bulba. And a Bulldog does have the refresher. Is yet to use it. Now there's a sphere and a coin. Five. Once again, another five-man sphere. Chessie's down immediately, as is the Jakiro. And look at Sing Sing clean house. Loda back up and back down like that. 
that's godlike for Sing Sing, and I'll tell you what, I don't care what it says on the screen, this man right here, Koigva, has been out of his mind all game long and may have just won the game for Tinker. <laughs> oh, Bulba just messages me. He goes, wow, a lion. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, anyway, I, I can't believe it, man. Like, okay, first, I have to give you, yeah, obviously, a lot of credit to Koik for forgetting that. But at the same time, can you really blame him for, like, like... It was so easy. They were all just yeah. there, ready to take it. There's a refresher also bought onto Void. Double or double buybacks here for both Bulldog and uh, and Loda. So yeah, I mean, obviously it was a great Chrono, but you cannot stand like that. Like especially when you whiff. I don't even know if I should say whiff. But yeah, it basically was a whiff. Like using one full Ravage onto a friggin' support hero yep. that doesn't really do that much. He's like not that farmed either. I don't know if that's a decision. And if you're gonna do that, you can't just like. Use it, everyone converges, kills that hero, and then walks awake together holding hands. Like, you've got to spread out, because you have to, you have to know that, okay, one rabbit is down. That, that maybe gives me some time to try to find an opening. And they all walk together, literally a five-man chrono. I mean, can you ask for anything more? I don't know why Bulldog didn't refresh as soon as he ravaged, either. I mean, even if right. you don't use it immediately, um, it just, why not? Like, it just wasted cooldown time, if nothing else. But, yeah, big win for Tinker, and... This is beginning to feel like it may be all over but to crying as that deficit just, yeah, took a nosedive in favor of Dire. And, I mean, just look at Sing Sing, dude. He's got he's got a demon edge on the courier, I'm pretty sure. He did. Let's see. Yep, Sing Sing. Yeah, now he's got his recipe. Two Battle Fury, two Daedalus done. 42 minutes in. Down at bottom, we're going to have Pycat trying to be aggressive. <laughs> he's killing Dooms them both. both. And load up. Nope, not denied. And got the kill on the Shadow Shaman as well. The gem, at the very least, picked up by Bulldogs. He, he literally killed both of them at the same exact time. Chessy activating BKB and ulti. Trying to get some stuns uh, with his Basher up onto somebody. Not going to find. He's getting kite around a little bit by Bulba. One more auto-attack should kill Bulba. Bulba's pissed. It's okay, though. He's going to get a counter kill onto Misery. And uh, holy shit, godlike streak here for Sing Sing. As uh, this is approaching the 30k experience. Yeah, it is actually a 30k experience. So crazy, crazy game. All in the back of this void from Co from Koikva. Like I mentioned, Universe, watch the F out, man. Because holy crap, Koikva is just putting in a clinic here. No joke. 32 to 13. And Alliance once again giving up way too much. We're going to have Koikva engaged by Chessy. And Whoa! Strong as he is. <laughs> You could just get blown to pieces if you try to go toe to toe with a lichen that is this farmed and this big. We're gonna have EGM getting some help from Sing Sing Bulldogs there with the Ravage, got them both. Chessy Telekinese comes back down to Earth, we'll be able to clean up the Rubik. And a gem on the ground once again. Sing Sing caught with the second refresh Ravage, and that's gonna be 1400 gold that goes to Key. Nice little infusion for him. So just as soon as it looks like might be down to the death pangs and the death rattle of this game. Alliance fights back, gets a couple of good kills. This is an insane game, man. Like, just when I think there's no way for Alliance to come back, you have crazy stuff like that. I, like, that was kind of silly by Koifu, but at the same time, he got bashed, I think, like, three times right there. Didn't even have time to use the ulti or the time walk away and just died. Mm -hmm. There was so much freaking damage from Chessy, so gave him a free one there. Then the double Ravager coming out from... Uh, from Admiral Bulldog is good for them. They're going to knock at these tier. Do they have buybacks here? Rubik does not. Ember, I think, does. Yes, Ember does. And Void, I'm sure, does as well. Yep. So. Well, they're going to try to whittle this thing down. And just heard the wards go down up at top, so Key trying to be cutesy about it. There's going to be the buyback, and they're going to come right out on him. And they invest a lot. Pycat's there to help clean it up. And look at bottom. Koifa going to work on Chessy. And now the Chronosphere off the refresh. Able to bring him down. The rest of Alliance on the run. EGM manages to steal Song. No way. He got Song. Pycat there with the Doom on the ready. Five seconds until he can refresh as well. Doomed on the Admiral Bulldog behind that. Koifa going to work on Loda. Loda being tracked down through the trees. But we see Bulldog drop down in mid. Koifa getting the old okie doke from Loda, but unable to <laughs> sidestep him as often as he would have liked. They end up losing one Rax out of that. That's going to be in mid. They lose a the tier three bottom. But once again, Tinker on the charge. Take a look at buyback. Lycan has his. Tidehunter does not. Down for a full two minutes. They're going to have to try to defend this without him. 
And the song not up for another 70 seconds. That's actually a big deal. Still short of level 16. Yep, and the song of the siren for EGM is actually still available if he wants it in 70 seconds, but uh, be nice. Oh, actually, Misery's doing a good job about keeping the creep wave pushed up for him. So, actually, even though they won that, it's going to be hard for them to actually do any objective work. They can't get that tier 1 tower, or that tier 3 tower um, through backdoor protection, and Misery's pushing up the wave. So, my god, man, this is one of the crazier freaking games I've seen in a long-ass time. <laughs> For sure. This, this is what you were yeah. talking about, the potential for this to go late. We knew Thanaga got relevant. She could extend games as she always does, and she's damn well relevant. Manta style done, as well as the Radiance has the urn. Had that back from her support days. Grew up and decided she wanted to do a little bit more in the world. But, yeah, Tinker's going to have to back. They can't afford to just let the base be whittled away on, given they are already down a racks in mid, and Tier 3 is not in the best of shape either. Sing Sing going to go back and farm. Yeah, he's got, double, as you mentioned, double Daedalus, double Battle Fury. One more item slot available. You should probably buy bots at this time, too. to be really good for him. Uh, it is crazy, because they can't actually push into the base with Misery constantly pushing out with his uh, illusions here like this. It's, it's very, very difficult for them. They're fighting these fights and winning them like on their side of the map. They need to fight them on, on Alliance's side of the map, so the distance from them to the, to the base is much shorter. And it looks like they're finally in a position to actually take high ground effectively yep the push not quite quick enough the wolves are gonna go and try to push in mid behind those mega creeps from the one you, down you know racks. what alliance should honestly buy bots on multiple heroes song of the siren people bought them and then just bots in and try to go for the throne i really think so might be what we see i don't know that they could stand up to quick and sing sing right now they don't have bots on any of their heroes though so they're just trying to they're trying to cheese them as much as they can and split push and rat as much as they can but here they are finally knocking at the front door is team tinker there's a nice pat trying to buy time misery has ulti up and ready to go whenever tier three under siege we got two heroes up the top that are going to try to split push there's that song you were talking about no bots reaction bulldog has two ravages ready there's a macro pyre that got three and the ice path caught two behind it bkb is there pie cat deciding to chase out bulba force to pull look back up at look at chessy yep he's chessy. taking the rex Chessy forcing everyone back, and Quakefoot's going to jump and gets off the Chronosphere. Chessy, tanky, there's the help. Bulba getting some payback. So he drops the Mystic Flare, and we can see the wards went down at top two, but not enough to really get the job done. In the meantime, at bottom, Pycat's still hanging around. Bulldog has yet to spin into Ravage. We'll finally go ahead and use one. He's going to be able to get the Doom with it quite easily. So they end up losing Doom, who does not have buyback. So Doom down for a full 100. Lycan does have buyback. Naga also with buyback. So it looks like we're up to another stalemate moment. Can you imagine if, if TPs were canceled right there? Oh, my God. They would have got them all. They would have got all the racks. Crazy stuff. And actually, Misery denied himself by killing himself with his illusions because it actually said he commits suicide. So, cra yeah, I, I feel like this is a game of rats now for Alliance, and they have the tools to do so with the... Uh, with the wards up and then just the, the pure pushing power of Lycan. Pretty crazy stuff right now. And I, I could easily see some kind of cheeky all-in play here from, uh, from Alliance. But again, here comes the team of Team Tinker without their doom this time, though. Pushing again, this time in mid. Naga going to be back up. Her ulti still 30 seconds down. Quake going to go ahead and go high ground. He's going to have two Chronos up in four seconds. There's the heart picked up by the Naga Siren. So she's even more of a nuisance than before. Load up. Getting into position. And, yep, there's the ice path. And they engage on the Naga, but it's not the real one. Just buying time right now. Doom up in 30 seconds. Lycan's going to be up in two. Do they really want to fight against this Lycan without the Doom? About to find out. Sing Sing is quite gigantic. Ice path once again catches Koikva. And they're trying to cope with these Naga illusions, but they're so tanky with the completion of that heart. They do clear a few of them off. Chessy and Loda standing vigil. Over this tier three mid, and yeah, they're gonna have to back as Key shows himself in bottom lane. Pushing, just level 14, doesn't have level three Serpent Wards, but this is enough to allow Alliance out of the base, and this is not where they wanna be. Absolutely, I really feel like bots are, are in order here, tall order here, for, or well, not tall order, but in uh, demand here for Alliance. I think they could do some really good things with bots on Key, bots on the, the Lycan. Um, just bots on multiple heroes. Like I mentioned, if they if they have one lane pushing, 
And if they notice any kind of push coming from Team Tinker, they can bots in and just take their entire base with a sleep, a sleep uh, from Misery. So be interested in to see if they try to do something like that. But honestly, at the same time, I really feel like they have the tools to just fight them, despite such a huge lead that Team Tinker have had. It's over 30k experience, which really is negligible at this point. And, uh, and net worth is honestly not that bad either. This is a hell of a game. Oh, absolutely. And Tinker, once again, maybe a little positionally at a disadvantage. Chessie is pushing top. They have to respond. Yeah, they got to send home. And Key never left bottom lane. PyCat thought he blinked and TP'd, I think. Or maybe blinked backwards and ran away. But Key has been sitting here the whole time, ready to come out and shove this lane once again, if needs be. Ooh, Chessie. In the sights of Koikva, he's going to turn and just engage onto the creeps, though, suspecting rightly that uh, the Lycan would use his ulti and would be tough to catch. However, this allows Alliance back out of the base. So, once again, the game continues to unfold. Now, 50-plus minutes. One more item here available for uh, Sing Sing if he needs it. I'm trying to think here what could be good for him. Honestly, I... A BKB wouldn't be bad either. Like, oh, they're pinging out Key. They couldn't find him in time. He will get the TP out. So Key being cheeky. There's two gems in the base as well. He should really think about either bots or ags, I think, right away. He won't have enough of the ags, but uh, Alliance, like I mentioned before about 20 minutes ago when they had the Radiance on Naga, as long as they can extend this, they'll actually be in a pretty good position as they're taking, I think, is the fourth Roche? I'm not 100% sure, but yep. either way, it's dying fast. Cheese on this one. As Roshan is going to end up dropping, and Naga takes the Aegis. Cheese was picked up, yep, by Loda. Relying on Loda a lot to be their dedicated lockdown in these fights. And really, he's he's answered the call. He's been there to keep them off the towers. He's been there to follow up. And he's really put that Atos to work as well. Still feel like Yules is situationally potentially as good, but certainly tanks him up a whole lot, and he's tough to bring down. 2,200 health. On this it, level 18 Jakiro. Yeah, you also, or, uh, the Atos is actually quite good for base defense, if you think about it. it. You can cast it from such a long range away that when they, like, when you're trying to do chip damage with an ice path or, or you know, not. Oh, I see Key is dying somewhere. Yep, he died to the Doom, yep. actually. It's unfortunate for him. It was a BKB expended, and that BKB is now at four seconds for Pycat. You should really think about investing in a new 10 second Ooh, BKB Jesse. as Jesse. Caught by the Chronosphere. Here comes Sing Sing in, doing what damage he can. Jesse has BKB. And he's just going to turn and use the Abyssal. Now BKB and try to run away. There's the song. As Chessie with his BKB still active turns around for a second. Now there's going to be EGM. Caught song. They've got at least Loda ready to go. Chronosphere ready to be refreshed by Koikva when they want it. And no. Actually just heading back right now. Not liking the angle into which they would be engaging. Sing Sing trying to get away. Now taking quite a bit of damage. Hit with the ensnare. Forced to remnant. Back to safety. Up on the high ground, we've got Bulba. He's in no shape to fight. He's being burned to death by this Radiance damage. And the rest of Tinker has to spread out. Koikva down to half health as well. That's the real misery. And there's going to be a Ravage. They're going to get Koikva for free here. Ice Path to follow. Well played. And another Ravage after the refresh. That one got Sing Sing. Behind the fight, we see the Doom on the Loda. Pycat. Ready to chase him down. Buybacks to plenty. Buyback on the Lycan as well as out of the Void. There's going to be wards. Used on Pycat. Keys there. He gets silenced and blown up with the Mystic Flare. Bulldog helping Misery to clean up. Now Sing Sing comes in. Pycat stunned and blown up. EGM, what did he get? Got Ice Path. Throws it back out. Misery on the run. Sing Sing off his buyback. Getting yet another kill. And the Aegis finally popped off. And he will go ahead and rim it away. So Misery. Loses his Aegis, but again, the madness that is this game continues as both teams look to reset all the buildings still standing. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I literally, that was one of the only times I'm casting, and I literally just was like, I have no idea what's going on in this fight. Yep. Like, just spells being stolen, ultimates being cast, buybacks coming in, bots through, and it's all pretty much a stalemate. Like, nothing really happens. This is, this is, I think, easily the most crazy freaking game I've ever cast or watched in my life. Like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Up it's up there for it's sure. It's crazy, man. Oh, my God. We're approaching the hour mark, and the, the metrics really go out the door at this point. It's not, I mean, you, we can talk golden experience, Lee, but really it comes down to play. Item choices, original team composition, and how well they suit the late game. And right now it is neck and neck. Scythe of Ice picked up on the Jakiro. Very nice pickup for them. That's 
one more piece of lockdown they're going to need. Koikva. Really, with the Mjolnir up, and now the crit is getting to where he... I mean, he's always been a threat, and we've seen him make a difference, but if he can get to where he's really just blowing heroes up, that could be what it takes to put Tinker over the edge. Yep, he definitely needs that Daedalus, but uh, he, he doesn't quite have the gold, and there it is. The all-in rapier here for Sing Sing. He does not have buyback. He just had enough gold to buy this, and this is a stand they need to... They feel on the back foot now. There's some actually annoying illusions coming out. And they don't have backdoor protection. It's on the range rack, so it's going to take permanent damage from just some measly illusions from Loda, but definitely worth noting. And, uh, yeah, here we go with the Rapier. It's pretty much all in here at this point. Although, if he does die and Void Jeez. is able to pick it up and drop, like... I don't know, what does he drop? His treads? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he has to. Yeah, I would probably drop the treads as well. I don't know how many. Yeah, he's got eight seconds on his BKB. Wouldn't drop that in the Diamond meantime. Just trying to hold the base against all these illusions. This Naga Siren with the defusal now to go with a litany of other big items she's picked up. Pycat trying to hold this Rax as best he can. It's getting pecked away at by the siege creeps and they lose it for free. As Pycat. Oh my god. Not enough with the right clicks to keep it standing on his own. And Naga Siren is miserable. At all stages of the game, once again, we see Alliance prove that, and now it's up to Sing Sing and his expensive-ass paperweight to get the job done. I, I just can't believe that looking... I, I know in the late, late stages of the game, experience doesn't matter, but it's still crazy to me that 15, almost 15 minutes ago, this is a almost a, like nearly a 40,000 experience lead for Team Tinker, and they're on the, they're on the verge of losing this game. Uh, and now they're getting a split push by Chessie, who does have bots. Do they have any more bots? Yep, bots on Misery, who is now at 26,000 net worth. And yeah, he is completely right in this Radiance pickup when he bought it around, I don't know, 30 minutes it's or about, so. It's about 28, 29 minutes. Yeah, it is completely paid off. Here we go, action oh. from Pycat. He gets hexed oh. up! Oh! Engage into the whole team! That caught Koi from behind the trees. I don't know if they know he's there yet. They're about to. There's a Chrono. Caught three. EGM is right there. Will it be able to steal? What did he get? What did he get? Got an Anchor Smash. Another Chrono as Koi just chopping wood. And Team Tinker getting the job done with just a handful. Misery buys back immediately. Chessy trying to continue to split push. Koikva, we were just talking about it. If he got to where he could blow these heroes up single-handedly, that would be enough to put them over the edge with the help of Sing Sing, and they got it there. The top racks are going to go down. It's range racks, too. They don't have ba or they don't have fortification. They go down. Yes. They're down to two soul racks of the melee from the top side and the bottom side. And I know it's just a range of racks, but when you're up against a really rat team like this that has global presence in PyCat, he could be in some trouble if he takes some damage. No, he doesn't have Blink nope. for three. Atos! Atos, and his BKB was on cooldown, and he gets hit with the Abyssal! Got hit with the Abyssal! From behind, BKB not on cooldown, or off cooldown. He does not have buyback. 120 yeah. seconds for him! Just a feed. Only word for it. Way out of position, way overextended. And punished for it. Down for 105 seconds now. Chessie, in the meantime, going to go to work at bottom. Misery's right there with him. We see Sing Sing doing all that he can. And that's about as stacked an inventory as you're ever going to see. So it's not as if he hasn't done his part. It's not as if he hasn't had a big impact. He's 14, 2, and 12. But I don't know that he, even with the power of Koikva and how well he's been playing, is going to be enough if they're down a man. Yep, and Tide should buy bots when he comes up. I actually think that Loda, when he comes up, he should sell like his either his mech or his Atos and just buy bots. And just I think this is the time to win. If they know for sure that Doom does not have, oh nope, they're not gonna do it. They're gonna extend the I guess a little bit because like and TP top. So wanting to play it rather safe than sorry. Obviously, when you get to this point in a 60-minute game, it's probably the smarter thing to do. But I think they could have maybe pressed the issue um, just a little bit because Doom was down for so long. But like you mentioned, when you saw. Three heroes die immediately like that to just Koikfa alone? It is a little bit scary. <laughs> well, for now, Tinker continues to hold the line. Don't forget there are thousands of dollars on the line for this match, by the way. Yeah. A single elimination, best of five. So if you win through to the next round, you immediately jump in terms of prize pool return. So even though just one best of five, this does have decent implications. They're having to invest everything just to clear off these illusions. Key continues to just be the little rat bastard he is. <laughs> hiding out in the trees. The stand-in for Alliance taking to the team quite well. He dropped Jim. 
And it's dropped outside of the trees, oddly enough. Is he going to try to bait this? Is that the plan? Wait. No, 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 no. If he, uh, are you talking about Key? Yeah, he dropped the no, gem outside of the trees. He... Look, you see it? I, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> Is he trying to, like, bait here? I, I, well, regardless, he's just waiting for the creeps to push in just a little bit. Yeah, yeah they're actually picking it. As soon as they cross a certain line, he can blink in and get some damage out to the melee racks. I think they have fortification, though. So, yeah, they do. So it's not going to... It'll at least bait out a fort, if anything. Which I think, if he has buyback, it's worth it, to be honest. What a rad game. Look at this. Two heroes on either corner. I know, man. <laughs> Alliance going back to the roots with two new players. Actually, this one's a new player plus a stand-in. <laughs> yep. Training them up. Training them up good. Bringing them up through the Ivy League. Or the Ivy League system? No. The... Uh, the minor league system. I have no idea how I got Ivy League in there. 60 minutes in. We're now officially past one hour game time. Key continues to <laughs> hang out with his gem, and he's going to oh. go blink ahead. Getting pretty brave. He's EGM. Just there. He's going to spot there a this. Yeah. He's going to spot this. You'd think he would. Very close. He sees, I, I see somebody pinging it. That was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Bulldog. Bulldog was pinging right on top of the gem, and EGM in the meantime just watching. Here comes Bulba on over. The rest of the map pretty dead. Wolves show themselves. Everyone collapsing over to this side now. That gem's still there. Roche up in 25 seconds. And looks like EGM will be playing back. So Key just going to continue to hide. God, can you imagine if this sh Shadow Shaman had Ag's Refresher? Mm -hmm. this, this would just be over. Like, yeah. The second backdoor protection is lost. It just It's just over. But... He's used a lot of his time to do this kind of stuff, these cheeky plays and just get himself in position. So the second that Team Tinker lets their guard down and they have no backdoor protection, um, these racks will just fall. Pycat going to go ahead and TP elsewhere. Roshan now the point of contention. This is going to free things up for this Shadow Shaman whenever he wants to go, and it may be soon. Top is pushing, though. Look at that. That's a good, decent push that is not being responded to by Tinker. So the second that cross that line, like I mentioned, he can throw in wards. They go bottom. Lycan TP's top takes that rack. They can't defend both at the same time. So they have to have constantly someone back here to, to defend this. Well, they do have a glyph. So the timing of it going to be very important. Trying to bait out the glyph and ensure that a rack somewhere drops. But yeah, Key, I think I'm just going to watch Key until you someone starts hitting on another hero. Oh, hang on. Quick vote, close enough, going to go into Roshan. You know, I think if this was a pub game, he would actually get an abandonment. <laughs> yeah, he's been there for a while. Because <laughs> I don't think he's got uh, experience for at least five minutes. <laughs> Roshan down the half. Let's see. I think it's hilarious, actually. You're right. He would be. He would have been abandoned by now. <laughs> Roshan drops. Cheese and Aegis down. And we're we not going to go. I would have thought by now. Nope. His team getting into position at top. So, yeah, they're going to try to do it this way. Rest of them pulling back. 45 to 22. In a game that's lasted more than an hour. And looks as if it could last another hour. They are collapsing back on both lanes, though. <laughs> yeah, the thing they need to be careful for for Alliance is that they don't get engaged on, like, right here. They need because that's what that's what TT wants to do. They want to engage outside of the base. So that's what they're trying to do anyway. Oh, Sing Sing Hex, Ice Path gonna be off the mark. There's gonna be the Ravage though. Sing Sing has that Rapier. Will they be able to bring it down? They do. Rapier on the ground. Pinged out and picked up by Lycan. Koikva though, engages in Song at you the same BKB. time. Song at the same time. Koikva ready to come back out of this. And Chessie trying to run. He's gonna be doomed. They picked him off. Chessie can, yes, they bring him down and Sing Sing reclaims what's his. And bottom, Key drops the wars, but the response is there in time. EGM getting there just in time and a bizarre turn of events as it looked like Alliance had finally closed this one out instead. Oh, one more attack! The wards bring down that Rax. There's one Rax standing. That's melee Rax at top now. And it's about time for a death push. They have to soon. Lycan, in terms of buyback, does have it. Tidehunter does as well. I don't know, man. What do you do if you tinker? Go all in. Another one? Go, yeah. He, go, I would say <laughs> go all in and go throw it. But it's, you have to. The, the thing is, you have to, at the same time, push out the lanes. You can't ignore that fact because Alliance can just bots in and, and, and throw it probably just as fast, if not faster. 
I mean, they do have a Divine Rapier on Sing Sing, but he has no BKB. That's the problem. He needs. Yep. I think he needs to sell something for... No, he has two Divines. Sorry. I didn't yep. see that. That's all I was saying. He bought another one. Yeah, he, need, he needs a BKB, like, desperately. Because even if he, like... It doesn't have the extra damage or cleave. Like, he needs to be able to stand alive for at least 10 seconds to just do some damage to these buildings. If they don't kill the buildings, they don't win this game. Tier 3, engage upon Quakefoot doing good damage. Here Going we go. Work on the racks. TP's top, Jesse. He's TPing top. It is Sing Sing here in mid. They're going to try to make a run at it. There's going to be a song. Pycat this was hexed up at top. Chesse and Key making a run out of EGM's there. There's going to be the BKB, and they're just going to go for it. In the meantime, back here at the base, Doom on to Lota. No, he wasn't doomed. It's actually yep, now going to be used as they doom him out. But back up at top, we see EGM helping to catch out Key. Bulb is there to try to help out as well. In the meantime, they're chasing down Lota. We see the kill is secured back at the base. And in the meantime, Sing Sing and Koikva still doing their work. There's buybacks of plenty. Two. Back up and ready to defend. The, the amount of damage output Sing Sing has right now feeling pretty nuts. Quakefa's there. Sing Sing sitting near the back. They need some help. Ch Chessing up on the ridge line. Quakefa's going to have two Chronospheres when he wants them. They are down all of their racks. This is it. They are going to have to go for it right now. Pycat setting up. Quakefa now shows his face forward. Could be a big fight. Everyone's fairly low health, except for Sing Sing and Koikva. Look at their base. Yep, it's getting swarmed. They have to go right now. And Pycat moves up. Koikva using the Mask of Madness. Sing Sing just staying back. There's going to be the song. Easy oh, he's up. doing it. The base is dying, though. Oh, those we may have lost you for a second there. Admiral Bulldog comes in to just stall some time. There's the second Ravage as well. Koifa coming in. He's trying to do damage to the throne. Is not enough? There's the BKB TP from Chessy. He's doing damage to the throne as well. I'm not sure it's going to be in time. Koifa's trying to attack oh, it. Oh, it's so Lycan's close! Like it can get stopped, oh. though. Like it can get stopped for the time being. But also to Team Tinker, as they're not able to get the throne as well. And as you're back, holy shit, man. This is, this is too much for me. <laughs> Absolute insanity. Absolute insanity as the game rolls on. Both ancients still standing. This one is naked. Back at Alliance's base. They got a couple of racks still standing, but it's beginning to fill all in on both sides. Sing Sing made it home with both of his rapiers. Let's take a look just for sake of argument. This is by the metrics in favor of Tinker, but we can feel the desperation in them now. Taking a look at buybacks, only Tide and Naga have them. So if they decide to leave the base, this is going to be the extent of their game regardless. Bulba staying back with Sing Sing, at least for the moment. Here comes Misery. Misery comes in and is just trying to go for it by himself. He gets silenced out right on top of him. They're going to blow him up. Misery's down. He has buyback if he needs it and will go ahead and spend it. But now it's just on Bulldog. If he drops, he's the only one that can buy back. Here comes Koikva. He's going to go ahead and rush the throne. Pycat is there, banging away. Koik they got to come up. There's the song from Misery. He's got both of them hemmed up. In the meantime, they managed to get Bulldog. He's going to buy back up here. We've got Loda rushing in with Key. Pycat going to work along with Koikva. Koikva and, and Pycat doing work. They got Loda. it! Loda is going to end up dropping down they at the base. It. Misery caught by Koikva with the Chronosphere. Bulldog doesn't have a refresh, doesn't have a ravage. Koikva jumps in and they clean it up. Finally, these ancients that absorb so much damage, this game that lasted more than an hour, sees Tinker finally claim victory and send Alliance home in third slash fourth place here at the NVIDIA Game 24 Invitational. What a game, my friend. Oh, my God, man. Uh it's easily the craziest game. It is for sure the cra craziest game I've ever cast. They just won against Mega Creeps with only one set of racks against bots uh, uh, against bots with Chessie and Lycan, the Naga sleeping to stop them from TPing back, the Shadow Shot. Unbelievable, man. I mean, I'm just I'm speechless. I I, I can't say anything more. <laughs> Don't know that we have to add a whole lot more to that one. Great play from Tinker. And I'll tell you what is just as equally phenomenal. As good as this game was, this entire series has been a great story of comeback from Tinker. They were down 0-2 after getting throttled in the first two games. First two games yeah. of the series, less than 40 minutes. In fact, game one was right about 30. 
and just battling back alliance gives up three in a row and tinker will advance to the grand finals of the stream 24 invitational brought to you by and powered by nvidia Woo! gotta catch my breath and don't oh. worry we got another best of five coming up before long looking forward to that and hope in the meantime during the downtime such as it is that you'll check out the rest of the content here on stream 24 a 24 hour celebration of pc gaming all brought to you by nvidia i'm ac got some sweat on the brow got some breath in the lungs it needs to be expelled trout my friend uh yeah that was one of the crazier series that i've i've casted in a long time i've, I've casted some crazy ones but that game in particular certainly ranks quite high up there. Looking ahead to our next series, any predictions, any thoughts, anything along those lines? Now it's going to be EG versus who again? It's going to be EG versus Secret. Secret. Okay, I haven't seen Secret personally play that much. Um, obviously, I know a lot of what EG does. I know they've been trying out a lot of different heroes uh, with different roles for them. I... I hmm. I don't know, it's hard to say, but I definitely give the favor to EG. I think they're definitely going to take it. In how many games, I'm not so sure, but I'll just predict 3-1. Yeah, it's. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, guys. I mean, this has been an absolute blast of a day. And, like, and a blast of a series, I should say. But, um, but yeah, I and I, I don't know. Like, I am, I am legitimately <laughs> just flabbergasted. I just realized, by the way, it's not secret, it's Cloud9. Cloud9. Oh, yeah. oh, it's Cloud9. Okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking Cloud9 in my head the whole time you were talking, and for some reason it just dawned it's okay, on me. It's okay, man. It's okay. But <laughs> crazy day. At any rate, guys, hope you stick around. Again, going to be a little bit of downtime. Going to get the next two teams set up, but in the meantime, make sure you check out all of the rest of the content. You can follow Trouf and myself both on Twitter. It's at AC and at Trouf Dota at A-Y-E-S-E-E -E and at T-R-A-L-F-D-O-T-A. -E -E. The $15,000 Game 24 invitational rolls on again coming up next eg versus cloud nine we'll see you soon